Now we need to note that we're talking about divine justice here and not human justice. As we saw in our study of biblical law in the sphere of human justice, only the guilty are punished in Israelite law. You don't have literal punishment. Someone kills someone's son, then their son is put to death. That idea is rejected in biblical law. But God operates according to a different principle, a principle of collective responsibility. And that principle is understood in the early sources quite positively that the sins of the fathers are visited upon the children is an expression of God's mercy. Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, describes God as merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, and, that, and thus tolerating sin, though not completely clearing the guilty. As a mercy, he spreads out the punishment over three or four generations. Right? So this notion is tied up with the aspect of God's mercy. But evidently there are some who found this idea unjust, and other biblical passages try to bring a different sense of justice to this picture. And they emphasize that the third and fourth generations themselves must be wicked, and that seems to be the case in Exodus 20, verse 5. The book of Chronicles, which is a rewrite of the historical material, the historical narrative in the book of Kings, rewrites that material in a manner that never explains a catastrophe on the basis of guilt incurred by someone other than the one experiencing the catastrophe. In other words, it rejects the Deuteronomistic historian's device of delayed punishment, which you'll remember we discussed. It changes the narrative account so that no one suffers for a crime committed by someone else. It isn't the sin of an earlier generation that's finally visited upon you know, a grandson or a king of a later generation. So it seems that after 586, or certainly in Ezekiel's case, some accepted the idea that the nation was suffering because of the accumulated guilt of previous generations, notably the Deuteronomist, but for others, like Ezekiel, the idea of accumulated guilt and intergenerational punishment seemed to lose some of its explanatory power, perhaps because the, the destruction and the exile seemed devastatingly severe punishments that didn't fit the individual crimes. So Ezekiel is one who rejects the doctrine of collective responsibility in the operation of divine justice. In chapter 18, he responds to the idea of suffering for the sins of one's ancestors by declaring that God isn't going to work that way anymore. God will no longer punish people collectively. Each one will be judged individually. Only the sinner will be punished. And that's a major departure from Exodus 34 and even from the contemporaneous Deuteronomistic view.